industrial agriculture is not just stagnant, but is declining and it needs to hide behind things like the Ukraine war to say, oh, oh, we need industrial agriculture because Ukraine will not supply us with soya and sunflower anymore. Um, so the chemical agriculture had an alternative and it prospered. At that 1987 meeting, the industry said by the turn of the century will be five companies controlling all seed. I think about seven countries, they have dominance of GMO seeds. Most seeds are GMO free. Seed banks have spread all over, like Annalise, the saving seed. And more importantly, our seeds are continuing to outdo the GMOs in pest control, in climate resilience, in conserving water. Um, we've just done a study with our farmers in the cotton areas. Our farmers are earning two to three times more by having their own seed, creating their own markets and giving up the GMO BT cotton. Some of our farmers with their local seeds, local economies are earning 10 times more. So the idea that an economy in partnership with the earth will leave you poorer is false. The idea that you chase the five corporations and their slavery and you'll get rich is the myth. We feed the world. We make you rich. Every time they want to take something away from you, they come with the slogan, we are developing you. We're increasing your incomes. We'll create growth. I think those three words you should be very suspicious about. You know, development is that which a system does. It evolves from within. That's development. Um, growth is life. When a plant grows, a seed grows, that's life. The minute growth and development are used for money, it is a new colonization. And in any case, the reset guys have said you won't have anything. So might as well start creating more beautiful worlds in which we don't need their terms. We don't need their constructs. We don't need the artificial economies that they have created. I mean, Adam Smith is called the father of modern economics. And I decided to read him. You know, I haven't needed to read him, but I decided to read him while writing my new book. And I couldn't believe it. It was basically a description of colonialism, that, but he called it economy. He said competition and greed comes in our womb, you know, from the day we are in our womb. No, greed is in a handful of human beings. Most human beings would be happier caring and sharing. The diseases of the colonizers are not human and we need to start recognizing them as dysfunctionalities, as distortions of what the human being is. So look around you, everywhere people are creating alternatives that work for the earth, that work for community and do not, you know, everything that creates violence against the earth creates violence against people. Everything that drives non-sustainability, which is our relationship with the earth, creates injustice. And as Oxfam has written, while the COVID was growing, they wrote a, a, a brilliant report called the inequality virus. Trillions was made by big tech by trying to force us, you know, down the tunnel of the fourth industrial revolution. This greed virus is what needs to stop. And the way we stop it is make them irrelevant to our lives by living differently.